this is One Man's Family. One Man's Family is dedicated to the mothers and fathers of the younger generation and to their bewildering offspring. Today, transcribed, we present Chapter 10, Book 71, entitled Father Barber and the Eavesdropping Episode. All morning, the swimming pool in the patio at the back of the house was swarming with children. But now it's afternoon. Some are down for naps, some are at the creek with Nicolette and Betty and Mother Barber. And one skippy is exploring the highways and byways on his motor scooter. So when Paul comes out of the house, only Joan is at the pool's edge in her skimpy new two-piece bikini, pushing her hair up under her cap. Well, Joan, all ready for the swimming pool? Yeah. Wait till Grandfather sees this swimsuit. Yes. Get it a bug here and just about as big. That's what I mean. Come on and get your trunks on, Uncle Paul. Mine, too. I wouldn't be surprised if I did pretty soon. Pool looks very inviting out there this afternoon. Uh, Paul, do you have a minute? I most certainly do. Several of them. Well, I'm kind of in a spot, and I need your help. Okay. Grab a beach chair and let's hear it. Well... Ken Arthur phoned from the airport a few minutes ago, and he said he'd like to see me. Oh? Well, I haven't seen him since the other night when we... Well, since we were trapped by the high tide on the beach all night. I know. Well, he's worried that you and the rest of the family are sore because we were together all night and... Oh, you know, and stuff and things. Well, I thought I made it clear to him the morning we found you that we held him in no way responsible. Well, he said you were swell about the whole thing, but he's beginning to wonder now if he's ever going to see me again because of what happened. See? Mm-hmm. Well, when he phoned, what was his plan, to drive up here to the Sky Ranch? Well, that's just the problem, Paul. I didn't know what to tell him. It was embarrassing. Oh, I'd like to ask him up here, but Grandfather would raise such a fuss and probably insult him and everything else. Probably make him pretty uncomfortable, all right. Well, sure. So I had to stall, and, well, that makes it look like I don't want him or, or we don't think he's good enough to come up here. You know how he feels about just getting started and being a mechanic's assistant at the airfield without any money. Especially with Nicky and Claudia loaded with dough. Well, what difference does that make? Well, you know it makes a difference, Paul. He feels it. Not being able to take me any place but a neighborhood movie and buy me a Coke afterwards. Oh, what's wrong with neighborhood movies and Coke? Well, that's what I keep telling him. But he's got it in his head. I'm used to expensive stuff, and I'm not at all. Well, Nicky and Claudia have seen to that. Well, I try to kid him out of it, but... Well, you can still see how he feels... You'd wonder, too, if you were in his place while we never ask him up here on weekends. Anyway, at least once. Yes, awkward, no doubt about that. We certainly don't want anybody's pride hurt. Do you suppose we can arrange with Claude and Nicky to have him up here sometime when your grandfather's down in town? But it might be weeks before we could work out a deal like that. And what happens in the meantime? And what about today? I told him to call me back and maybe we could arrange something. Oh, I see. Uh... Would it be all right for me to take your car and meet him in Redwood City? We could have a Coke and talk for an hour or so, and then I'd come on home. Would that be all right? Your driver's license in order? Well, my temporary license is. I haven't got a permanent one yet. Well, it'd be perfectly all right with me, but, Joan, when you're up here with Claudia and Nikki, you must turn to them for permission. But, Paul, if you said it was okay, they wouldn't say anything. Well, maybe not, but I can't do it. Up here with them present, it isn't right for me to give you permission to come and go. They're in charge here. When you're in San Francisco alone, I'm head man and I make the decisions. You, you see the difference, don't you? Yes. Good girl. Claudia and Nicky are inside now. Will you come with me when I ask them? No, honey. I'm sorry. I can't see a thing in the world wrong with it. and I'd like to give Ken some reassurance that we're not down on him, but this is out of my province. You'll have to do this on your own. Mm, okay. Huh? I notice the corners of the mouth turning down a little. Tell me, is what I've said unreasonable? No. You feel that I'm right about it? Tell me quite honestly. Yes, I do. All right. Then the thing to do is to accept it in good grace. Hmm? I'm sorry, Uncle Paul. I guess I'm so used to potting and getting mean when I don't get my way. Sometimes I forget I'm living a new life. Old habit patterns are tough to break. You keep saying the real Joan is sweet. How do you know? How do you know the old defiant Joan isn't the real me? Now, which do you desire to be? The unhappy girl, tired and sullen? Or the eager, bright girl bursting with personality. Well, the last, naturally. And that's the real Joan. And it's coming through more and more. I'm very proud of you. Mm, thanks. Well, I think I'll go in and see what I can do. Uh-huh. The hill comes to Mohammed. What? Your maternal parent, Claudia. Ah, a mermaid, no less. I'd be a mermaid, I'm afraid. Well, 
Well, I see you're all ready for a dip, too, Joan, dear. Oh, my goodness, child, I didn't realize that suit was going to be that skimpy. You sure you're comfortable in it? Of course. It's a bikini. Who wants any more clothes than this? Well, here's a case where all and nothing are practically synonymous. Oh, Claudia, I've always told everybody at least I had a modern mother. <laughs> All right, darling, I won't disillusion you now. But don't be surprised if your grandfather sends you to the showers. Huh. Grandfather. Oh, what about you, Paul? Aren't you coming in? I think so, a little later. Well, Joan, shall we... Oh, I forgot my bathing cap. And Nicky! What became of him? He was right behind me. Oh, Nicky! Yes, I'm coming. Coming over here. Oh, bring my bathing cap, please. It's right inside there on the chair. Right out. Nicky going swimming? No, he has to go down to the stables, he said. He and Ben are going to ride out to see about repairing a fence. Some of the stock got out last night. There's always something when you own a breeding farm. Certain advantages in being poor, I suppose. Not that I said suppose. <laughs> ah, here comes the squire. Ah, you're very fancy in your riding breeches. What's that? Oh, the uh, riding outfit. <laughs> I believe they're getting a bit snug. Oh, here you are, Claudia. One bathing cap. Thank you. Well, you're all set for a swim, I see, Joan. Or oh, getting the bathtub. It's hard to tell which. Oh, my goodness, what a lot of comment this suit's getting. Do you mind, Nicky? Oh, not at all. Just for a moment, though, I was afraid you'd forgot to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and now, could you be serious a minute and let me ask you something? Oh, by all means. Serious it is. Yes, darling, of course. Well, in the meantime, I'll go and fight the Mars for what's left of my swimming. <laughs> <laughs> if you win, come out and join us. Well, it'll be a little while. I'll have a letter to write, and I might even shave. I'll see you later at the pool. Have a good ride, Nicky. Right, oh, thanks. Now, Joan. Well... Ken Arthur called and wants to see me. He's going to call back, and I thought maybe I could meet him in Redwood City and have a Coke. Would that be all right? You mean he's going to drive from San Francisco to Redwood City just for a Coke? Well, we haven't anything planned. I told him I couldn't give him any kind of an answer until I talked to you. It was my idea to meet him. Why didn't you ask him to come on to the Sky Ranch? I think it would be nice if Nicky and I met him. We've never seen him, you know. Well, I was afraid to ask him because of Grandfather. He's so antagonistic, he might run Ken off the place. Oh, I don't think the old boy would go quite that far, Joan. Well, he might say something dreadful that would hurt Kenny's feelings. He's already scared to death that everybody in the family hates him because of the other night. Well, what would give him that impression? Well, can't you see how he'd feel, Claudia? He's never met anybody but Paul. He's never been asked up here or anything. And no word from me or anybody else since that night. Gosh, I'd feel kind of funny, too. But I didn't think to ask him up here, darling. Why? Well, I... I don't know. It just never occurred to me. Well, it's all right, because I wouldn't want him here with Grandfather around anyway. Then why are you making an issue of it, my dear? Well, I just wondered if it was because you felt that he wasn't good enough for us or something like that. You own that never entered our head. Certainly not. As a matter of fact, I, I haven't given the lad much thought. Simply never occurred to me that it was a serious matter. Well, I guess it isn't. Not really. But I do like him, and he's keen and fun, and, and he works hard to support his mother, and he's trying to learn how to fly, and... Well, you know. Well, I'm glad you brought all this up, because I didn't realize... And, of course, we don't want him to feel we're looking down our noses. He has no father? No, his father's dead. I see. Well, would you like me to ask him for next weekend? Well, that's swell, Nicky. I don't think he could get away that long in the first place. We'd have to do something about Grandfather. Yes, we'd have to make sure that there wouldn't be any fireworks. The main thing was to find out how you two felt. I sure appreciate the way you've both been about it. And we appreciate your confidence in being so frank, Joan. It's good to know you've been telling us what you're really thinking. Well, when he calls again, do you think it would be all right then if I meet him in Redwood? Well, I don't see why not. Do you, Nicky? I think it would be quite all right. Oh, thanks a lot. You won't be late. No, no, I'll be home before dark. Good. Well, I have to be about my animal husbandry, as the official manual calls it. <laughs> see you both later. Have a good time, Joan. Well, thanks, Nicky. Quite all right. Shall we go dunk ourselves in the pool? Okay. Uh, Claudia. Yes, dear? Nothing. I was just going to say that I thought you and Nicky had changed. But I guess I'm the one who has. And it's beautiful. You make me glad I've got a grown daughter. Now, come on. Let's go in together. One, two, three. <laughs> There's a high back deck chair near the swimming pool, and it's this particular chair which draws Father Barber like a magnet whenever he leaves his hammock to sit in the patio. Before lunch, when the children were swimming, the chair faced the pool so he could watch them. After lunch, he turned it around because the sun was in his eyes. No one has noticed him lying there, so he isn't exactly eavesdropping, but the voices of the swimmers come to him clearly. 
Hazel has joined Claudia and Joan in the shallow end of the pool, where a little swimming and a lot of woman talk is in progress. And it was Shantan, a perfectly darling suit. Yes, I saw it in McCall's magazine, Claude. Now, I showed it to Mother. Would look sweet on her, but she said Father would raise the roof the Moody's in. She won't even suggest getting it. Oh, indeed. Well, why, for gosh sakes? Well, it is quite expensive, Joan. Honestly, since when has grandmother been browbeaten by anybody? <laughs> well, even your grandmother will only go so far, especially when your grandfather's in one of his crotchety spells. He's been crotchety as long as I've known him. Oh, have I any? Oh, no, Joan. He has his good days and his bad days, just like the rest of us. What was Betty in tears about this morning? I didn't know she was. Was she, Hazel? Oh, she was a little upset. She's all right now. It was that favorite granddaughter thing again. I've spoken to Father about it a thousand times, but it doesn't do any good. Do I know about that, Hazel? Hmm? Uh, what's the favorite granddaughter trouble? <laughs> Joan, you know, you've suddenly graduated. I have? Yes. How did you get included in this goth obsession? Oh, I just stayed for it. She's getting so grown up in both looks and actions. Sometimes it's hard to remember how young she is. I'm not so darn young. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is this about the favorite granddaughter? Uh, market, you mean? Oh, it isn't anything, Joan. Well, now you're going to treat me like one of the little children. Joan, darling, I wonder if you understand. Sometimes we talk about your grandfather and the problems we have with him, but it doesn't go any further. Do you understand? Oh, indeed. Oh, sure, Claudia, I'm not gossipy. Oh, problems with me, huh? He's so terribly sensitive, you know. It doesn't take a whole lot to hurt his feelings. Oh, sensitive. But there are times when his daughters have to put up a concerted front. Yeah, put the old man in his place, no doubt. And his granddaughters, too. And I ought to be in on it. What is this about the favorite granddaughter? Go on, tell me. Well, Betty's feelings were hurt. Father will say openly, right out in meeting, that Margaret's his favorite. <laughs> Ought to be flattered, I suppose, but I'm not. After all, Betty has six daughters, cute, sweet, pretty, all of them. I don't blame Jack and Betty for being hurt. I would be, too. Grandfather never does consider anybody else's feelings. On the other hand, he's actually terribly kind-hearted. It's just that he's thoughtless. Everybody's very self-centered, Joan. Your grandfather's no worse than anybody else. Oh, thank you, Claudia. Thank you. Well, I must say this for him. He may be thinking about himself, but actually he's thinking about all of us in relation to himself. Our father is really and truly a family man. The last of the patriarchs. I suppose he really is. Oh, it's so lovely in the pool today, isn't it? Mm, beautiful. But what made Betty cry, actually? I mean, what actually happened? Well, your grandfather gave Margaret a dollar. Not that Betty minded that. Only he said openly, Here, Margaret, here's a dollar for my favorite little girl. You can imagine what that's doing to Margaret, and I hate it. What's so fair and kind-hearted about that? I know, Hazel. Nothing. I agree positively. I know you've tried to stop it. Of course. If you could only see Margaret's face when she knows she's got him right round her little finger. Why, she looks positively smug. I may have to put my foot down and refuse to let her see him if it keeps on. Oh, indeed. And he's apparently just as addled about her, always has been. Uh, am I now? Dan and I don't know what to do. I've talked and talked to Father. Doesn't do any good. He just shuts his mind to it. Uh, Joan, darling, I think you ought to get out now. You were in long before Hazel and I joined you. Oh, sure. I never stay in this long. It's been so fascinating. Ask me again sometime, will you? <laughs> well, you get out now. I am. <sighs> but don't forget... Cut me in on the next gossip session. I didn't know you grown-ups talked together like this. You might be surprised. Well, excuse me while I go get into my swimsuit. I'll be right back. Mom! Oh, Mom! Yes, Margaret, out here. What is it? Where are you? Oh, here you are. Mom, stevie has got permission from Uncle Chris to ride his scooter down to the Skyline store for a bottle of milk. And he says I can go with him. On the highway? Oh, it's only on the highway a little tiny ways, Mom. And he's promised to look right and left and everything. Can I go? Can I go? Well, may I? I was going to ask Grandfather, but I can't find him anywhere. Yes, yes. Isn't he in his hammock? Nobody's seen him for over an hour. And why are you going to ask your Grandfather, may I ask? Because he always says yes. Oh, does he indeed? Sure. I've got Grandfather right in my pocket. Huh? Margaret, don't you say things like that. I don't want to ever hear you say that again. Well, then why do you have right in my pocket? You go up to your room. Go on for 15 minutes. Oh. March, go on. Well, for... Gee whiz, thanks anyway. March, young lady, hurry up. Somebody's always picking on me. See what I mean, Claude? It's just dreadful. All right, down there. All right, Clifford, come on down. How much longer are you going to stay in? Oh, a little while. It's lovely. Stick around here. I'll be down. Good traffic. 
Hazel, I suppose you know Cliff's taking Roberta Evans to another ball game tonight. I know it. Wrestling last night, fights last Friday. The poor girl's been on what Dan calls the perspiration circuit all summer long. <laughs> perspiration circuit is good. She must know it's all for Skippy. I don't know that I'd be too flattered if somebody was courting me and always brought his 11-year-old son around. Just the same, I think Miss Evans is playing it with real finesse. Somebody ought to put a bug in Cliff's ear. Father's encouraged him in all this, you know. What? Oh, sure. Father bought a season box at the park through some charity or other, so he's urged Cliff to use it. Hates to waste anything. All right, fine, I'm away. Paul, you're not going in. All over. I don't believe it. Well, what does this look like? Oh! <laughs> Cliff's coming in, too. Uh, good. How about a little water polo? Oh, I'm too deliciously lazy for water polo. Yeah. I prefer playing flotsam and jetsam myself. Just rise and fall with the tide in the backwater. <laughs> <laughs> Dad been in this pool this summer? Not once that I know of. Oh, well, what's the matter with him? He's simply terrified of catching cold. That's no allergy he has. He catches little cold. Yeah, free diagnosis. Yeah, I know. Down at Seacliff one night, he sat on the terrace about two minutes without a sweater and, you know. Catch you? <laughs> right. Here I come. I'll race anybody. Race anybody. Uh, Clifford, don't you dare die. Forgot my good old silver plate. I'll uh, just drop in feet first. Hiya, son. Uh, Clifford, no splashing. Come on, everybody swim. Brace your first. Oh, 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 oh. Somebody else was here. I lifted my head from the water and I saw somebody tiptoeing into the house. There goes to me. <laughs> Maybe it was Daniel. Uh, yes, Dan. I'm out of the swimming pool. Captain Leo's here. Jack got letter from Pinky. Well, why would Pinky be writing to his Uncle Jack? Bring it out, will you, Dan? We're coming in a minute. Is Dorothy for Margaret to come to? Claude, has it been 15 minutes? Oh, I think so. All right, Dan. Tell her she may come. Oh, I'm going to get out. Towels are over there. Yes, I've got mine staked out. <laughs> Oh, I've had enough, too. I want to hear Pinky's letter. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, who turned this chair around? What's that? Doesn't this chair usually face the pool? I think it does. Hey, get around, everybody. I got a graphic letter from that second assistant cook. So we hear, Jack. Let's hear it. Wait for us. Come on, Dad. Got my good it's slippery. Cliff, Paul, you want to hear Pinky's letter? I wouldn't miss it. Come on, Cliff. Sit here, Jack. When was it mailed? Uh, let's see. 28. Mary, over your shoulder? Now, Margaret, you just sit down and be quiet. Okay, but don't you think we ought to wait for Grandfather? Where is he? I don't know, Aunt Claudia, but he always likes to hear the letters. Well, this isn't so long, but it's plenty meaty. Uh, they've all been meaty. Amazing, the number of letters he's written. Oh, he's homesick, maybe. Oh, uh, here it is. Dear Uncle Jack, I got your nice letter, and it sure came at a good time... Because a second assistant cook in a lumber camp doesn't have many pleasures. Goodness, he sounds old. And the cartoons you sent almost made me laugh. <laughs> Not too old. <laughs> I, I haven't laughed out loud since I left home. I still mop floors and peel potatoes and do dishes, but now I also make oatmeal, pancake batter, and coffee, so the head cook, Mr. Arsati, that is, can sleep ten minutes longer. Why that mean Mr. Arsati? <laughs> the first assistant cook quit. He was worn out, and I'm now doing his work as well as my own. But I am still second assistant at the same wages because Mr. Arsati's cousin is on his way here to take the first assistant job. Nepotism. Nepotism, my eye. It's sheer child slavery. Ah, uh, yes. There's a skunk living under the bunkhouse, <laughs> and the lumberjacks don't mind it, but I can hardly breathe, especially when it rains. <laughs> lumberjacks don't like to have doors or windows open, and I've been here so long now, I can hardly remember how sweet everything smells at the sky ranch. <laughs> Love to everybody. <laughs> oh, look, Grandfather. Father, what in the world? Dad, where did you get that? Go for a swim. You and the Gibson girls. <laughs> Honestly, Dad, how old is that bathing suit? Very well, Claudia, very well. We can do without the ribald commentary. <laughs> Go on, Dad. Jump in, why don't you? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, first, I wanted the girls to look at this picture in McCall's magazine. Claudia, Hazel. Oh, oh there you are, Joan. Come over here a minute, my dear. Oh, yes, Grandfather. I was just putting on my sunsuit. Uh, you women know about these things. I don't. I just noticed this Shantung suit. Hazel, don't you think it would look well on your mother? 
Why, yes, Father, I do. Whatever made you think of it? Yes, yes. I want you and Claudia and uh, Joan, if she's interested, uh, to buy it for family. Here, here's a check. Check? Oh, but this is too much. It's three times too much. Well, well buy a three of them. Surprise her. Let's not be pinch many about these things. Grandfather, would you do something for me? Not one thing. Not one blessed thing. Oh, come on, Grandfather. And stop looking so positively smug. It doesn't become you. Why, Father? Are you mad at me? <laughs> Only dogs get mad. Oh, by the way, Jack, I had a wonderful chat with Elizabeth Sheridan Ann this morning. You did? Yes, yes. Elizabeth Sheridan Ann is at a cute age. I don't believe I've ever seen a prettier six-year-old. Or brighter either. <laughs> and quick as a wink. Somebody hold me. I think I'm going to faint. Uh, Margaret, why are you staring at me that way? Close your mouth, Margaret. <laughs> Hey, Father Barber. There, there, Margaret. Oh, clear it. I was looking for you. You can't have the box at the ballpark tomorrow night. I hope you haven't made a date. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, matter of fact, I have. Yes, yes, well, make some other arrangements. I'm going to let Fred Thompson have it. Oh, I see. Well, okay. If I were courting a girl, I doubt whether I'd take her around on the perspiration circuit night after night. Yes. And it may not be wise always to have your 11-year-old son with you either. <laughs> Uh, Margaret, are you crying? Why are you mad at me? There is a rumor around that you said you had me in your pocket. It was a rude thing to say, and I'm very angry about it. And stop crying now while I dive off the diving board. Okay. Oh, 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 be, oh, oh, be quiet, all of you. I may catch an occasional cold, but it doesn't keep me from going off the, the diving board if I feel like going off the diving board. Hey, what is this? Somebody better call Mom. You ought to join me, Joan. You're in all the adult activities and councils. You should have your swimsuit on now and join us out here. Hey, Dad, you better watch what you're doing. You're too old for such acrobatics. Don't tell me whether I'm old or not. Well, for God's sakes, what's got into him? Oh, Dad, don't bounce on it. It's liable to throw you. Uh, uh, how, how well can he swim? I've, I've never seen him in the oh, water. Oh, he can swim a little. Oh, sure. One year he swam right out of his bathing suit. It was very embarrassing. Hey, Dad, Dad, look out. Oh, no, Father! Oh, 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 oh Larry, Father! Hey, oh, hey, watch him. Get ready to go after him. He's all right. He's moving. Look, he's swimming underwater. Uh, he, he's going to make the ladder all right. Here he comes. Uh, 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 Dan, that was a terrible uh, belly flopper. Don't you stink? Uh, don't stink over the cart. Very uh, 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 Well, I just wanted a quick dip. I, I think I'll go in now. Uh, there it is. See you later. Don't have to leave the body in the... Water all afternoon to get the blood circulating. <laughs> 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 Quickest swim of the season. Our father's an in and outer. Claudia, he overheard us. I know, Joan. Hey, I know, Claudia, it's terrible. Well, somebody kindly explain this. I've never been so baffled in my life. Paul, father must have been sitting in that chair with his back to the pool while Claudia and I had a gossip session. Well, what did you say? I don't know. Claude, what did we say? I'm trying to remember. It was plenty, and he must have heard every single word. Well, now it's along about sundown, and Joan, who drove Paul's car down the mountain to Redwood City to meet Kenny Arthur, ought to be getting home, but no sign of her yet. Oh, I feel a little weary after so much swimming. You're not used to it, Paul. Dan and I have been going in at least once every day. Well, I'm not quite the regular patron of the pool that you and the kids are. I haven't noticed fins growing on any of the mature generation yet. Yeah, they don't begin to sprout until long about the end of the summer. <laughs> Father Barber seemed to have developed them suddenly this afternoon, however. You know, he's lucky if he didn't strain, break, or dislocate something in that belly flop off the diving tank. That man. <laughs> Why, Hazel, you sounded exactly like our mom then. That man. And she pounces on him just like your mother every now and then, too. Well, somebody has to bring him into line. It's outrageous the way he's been carrying on this summer. Yeah, quite a character. Does he know about Joan being down in Redwood City? I don't know. I certainly didn't tell him. Where is he, anyway? He's in changing, getting ready for dinner. Dinner? Isn't that late, is it? Oh, no. We won't eat for an hour or so. Why? Well, I just wondered. Not, uh, not worried about Joan getting home, are you? No. She is coming home for dinner, isn't she? Hey, look. Joan got permission from her parents for this. I had nothing whatever to do with it. Yes, Hazel. Joan still belongs to Claudia and Nicky. <laughs> yeah. Hey, turn around, Hazel. You're missing a beautiful sunset. Look up there through those redwoods. Mm, man, isn't that something? Mm. I never get tired of it up here. 
Especially those wonderful trees at this time of day. Hey, I wonder if Pinky will ever want to see another tree as long as he lives. Poor darling. <laughs> when he gets home and sits down to his first meal, you should bring in a big plate of fried potatoes. Oh, <laughs> oh how dreadful. We'll start off with potato soup. <laughs> Probably get up and leave home permanently. Well, we can be thankful for one thing. He hasn't got too much more time before it'll all be over. As a matter of fact, it won't be so long before the summer will be over for all of us. Where has the time gone? Well, somebody always says that along about this time. We'll award you the prize for being first with it this year. Now, if you can answer this next question, you'll win an icebox, complete with stalagmites. All right, Mr. <laughs> Master of Ceremonies, I accept. Yeah, but get ready to duck. Uh, she wouldn't hit a weary old man. <laughs> well, look at Paul Brummel. Why, Father, how nice you look. Hey. Is that a new sport jacket? Oh, no, not exactly. I have a chair, Father Barber. I've never seen you wear it before. I got it for this summer, but I, I've been afraid to wear it. Fanny says it's too loud for a man of my age. Well, I think it looks grand. Yeah, tweed. It looks like very nice tweed, too. Soft. Philippo. Mm-hmm. What horse do you like in the fifth at ten for Ann, Dad? <laughs> Humorous. <laughs> Any sprains, bruises, muscular soreness, abrasions or contusions from this afternoon's aquatic exhibition? If there were, do you think I'd admit it? <laughs> no, I guess you wouldn't at that. Uh, not to change the subject. Uh, Father, look up there. We were just remarking how beautiful it was with that red sun shining through the trees. Uh, it'll start to get dark before very long, though. That's the best you can say for it. <laughs> yeah, that's a very practical viewpoint, anyway. I had something else in mind when I mentioned the fact that darkness would be falling before too long. What was that? Not that I don't know. I'm sure you do, Paul. What are you two talking about? Sounds very ominous, doesn't it? You? Come, Father, speak up. Oh, there's nothing at all, my dear. I've made up my mind that I'm not going to comment on it one way or the other. Comment on what, for heaven's sake? Well, about a certain young girl of this household being allowed to go off to Redwood City to meet that... I can't trust my tongue to give him a name. You mean Joan? Who else? What's the darkness got to do with it? Well, she was to be home before dark. If she is, I'll miss my guess. Who told you about it? Your mother. Who else? Oh, dear. And why not? No one else seems to be inclined to give me any information. Who gave Joan permission to leave the Sky Ranch? Oh, look at me. I'm just a guest. Claudia and Nikki told her she could go, Father. What's wrong with it? Oh, nothing, nothing. I said I've washed my hands of the whole affair. I have made up my mind that no matter what happens, I'll never say another word about Miss Jones' comings and going. No, sir, not one word. You're sure, Father Barber, you didn't misplace a vertebrae in that belly flop? Very far indeed. Why, I've dived off river banks, off rocks, out of trees as I was knee high to a grasshopper. Huh? What's a springboard of me? You did kind of smack the water. Mm hmm. A belly flop. Daniel, you're right, didn't I? Well, whatever you call it, isn't your stomach sore? Certainly not. Never felt better. I'm glad you took a hot bath. That was good for you. It'll keep you from getting stiff. Huh. I don't get stiff easily. I wouldn't be able to work out in my garden day after day if I did. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll be in the hay early tonight. Yes, hope we'll all be able to go to bed early and not be sitting up half the night worrying again. Uh, we'll all turn in and let you worry for us, Dad. <laughs> Easy. And there go the last rays of the sun. Oh, there's Joan. She's just come in. Hello, Joan. Hi. Have a good time. Oh, wonderful. Be right off. Glad to see you, honey. Oh, thanks, Uncle Paul. I'm glad to get back up to the mountains. Right under the wire. I'm going in the house... It's uh, getting cold out here. You've just heard Chapter 10, Book 71, The One Man's Family. Written, produced, and transcribed under the direction of Carlton E. Morse. Chapter 11, entitled The Homemade Bread and Applesauce Peace Offering, will come to you next week at this same hour. family comes to you from California. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.